Welcome to Dishes Co-Creators, Lilou here on the Juicy Living Tour Europe. Today I'm in Reims in France with one of the, the speakers here at this Congress uh, of Quantic Planet. Thank you for being here and taking the time to speak also with us for all the people, all the juicy co-creators out there that don't have the chance to meet you in person and not being here. So thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. So I'm very interested in your, in your background. Could you tell us uh, what got you to be here, one of the speakers at this, uh, this, this quantum therapy uh, event? Well, you know, I, I think I'm regarded as one of the pioneers of uh, uh, body-mind medicine. I started doing this work uh, after a revelation that I had that my work was to heal with love in the mid-70s. And I was in a busy practice in San Francisco and uh, in a way spirit came to me and said your work is to heal with love you, you got that in the moment in a second I got that during a deep meditation I was in a room by myself it was dark and suddenly it seemed like somebody turned on the lights uh -huh. so I opened my eyes and the room was still dark and then I closed my eyes again and there was this inner luminosity and then I heard a voice which said your work is to heal with love but I say voice but it was so profound it was so awesome and uh, you know hair stood up in the back of my neck tears started to roll down my cheeks and then I said oh so I'm worthy and it said you're no more or less worthy uh -huh. than anyone else uh -huh. your work is to heal with love and uh, I knew it was true. I didn't know what it meant. And that's how I came to be here, because I started to explore eventually what healing meant and what love meant. And can we measure love? Can we measure the impact of... Uh, I know Heart Math has done a lot of studies, but uh, did you do your own research? I, well, I did my own research, and as a consequence of the research I did, which was actually done before Heart Math got involved in the research they contacted me uh, they had read my book and they said well, you're doing what we're doing please join us so i be became a member of their scientific advisory board for six years and so i did research with them and when i started doing the dna research that i eventually did they did the measurements on me and i'll be demonstrating some of the measurements that were taken at heart math when i enter into states of coherent love in other words there's a, a way of electromagnetically measuring when you're in a state of expanded uh, coherent love and can we be in that state in regular life or do we need to be in deep meditation to to reach it or is it more and more possible for you to do that now ongoingly during the day as well yeah well that's a very good question i think if you're if you uh, if you're conscious uh, of the fact that you can train yourself, then you can stay in that state. There are some people who spontaneously uh, remain in that state. And then there are people who come and go from that state. So we have a quite a spectrum. Uh, There's not one process for all. Uh, right. It's different for different people. But one of the things I, I, I intend to be sharing uh, today is that there are portals that you can enter these states through. And uh, Today, I'll be focusing on the heart portal, that opening, that heart space that opens us to expanded awareness. Well, tell us more now about that. We're getting in there. We want to hear more about that. that I, I guess, don't you want to hear more about it? That this heart portal, how, what makes it open up and why do you call it a portal? Okay, I call it a portal because although uh, what we're referring to is, is, is consciousness itself, we don't always have access to it, as you just mentioned. You know, are we in this state all the time? Well, we're not for most people. We have to consciously choose to enter into this portal. So how to, how to do that? And one of the things that, uh, you know, that I uh, learned before I entered into a relationship with heart math was that there were three easy steps to entering this portal. One is to simply shift your attention from wherever it is to the center of your chest, your energetic heart. S step two, breathe in and out through this energetic heart as if you're breathing through the heart. 
you know. And then step three, uh, focus on something that makes you feel good. Focus on some, a feeling that opens your heart. Now, if you can bring in and recall something loving, and most people can, then you do that. Or a feeling of gratitude, or even forgiveness, or caring, or appreciation. These are all frequency bands of love. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the entire electromagnetic energy of the body shifts into what we call a state of coherence. So uh, it's, it's like all of a sudden everything for the body makes sense and is working at its optimum state? Yes. What happens is that there's a, uh, the, the energy of the heart is the strongest energy in the body. And what it does is it entrains uh, these other uh, energy centers called oscillators in the brain that control breath and pulse and also in the solar plexus and in s several other areas of the body, and they all become entrained to the energy of the heart. So we become uh, an entirely coherent human body. We become like a human laser. And something interesting happens when the energy of the, of, of, of the body is cohered that way. The power is multiplied. It's squared. So the energy of coherent love is much more powerful than the energy of, say, hate or fear, which are based on the illusion of separation, yeah. which it can feel so strong. doesn't exist. But it can feel so strong, though, in our body when we feel it. It's, uh, it feels so much more, uh, of course, devastate, I mean, devastating or destructive than, yeah. than, than love. And love is this soft, gentle, yet powerful. So how do you... It, both are powerful then, it's just a different power. Yeah, it, it's, that's exactly right. It's a power based on an illusion. Mm -hmm. And that's why it, it doesn't, it's not sustained. Now, if you're, if you're so angry and then you go out and you act on that anger, mm -hmm. then it'll be sustained in terms of the impact that you've directed. But the anger itself and the hate itself is, is not based upon uh, a truth. That's the point. And, and while love is based on the under, underlying uh, awareness and felt sense of oneness or unity. Is, is, is love, can love also be a very fast, can the response of the, the consequences of love can be as fast as the anger and the, you know, when we start to act on it? Is, can, can it be as impactful in that state? Oh, Even more? More, more impactful more impactful. It's not a long-term thing. Yeah, I, well, I'm reminded of, uh, of a story. Uh, there's a friend of mine who was a, a student of a, uh, a, a saint in, uh, named Bawa in Sri Lanka. And uh, he was an attorney from Philadelphia, and he was, he was spending time with him, and he was sitting Uh, in the front, and Bawa was up on a pedestal, and uh, he's a very old man. His great grandparents remembered him when when they were young, and they said that he was 140 years old. I went and visited him myself. Uh, so apparently, and this is I guess a first-hand report, some man comes running in, disheveled and angry, and starts running at Bawa with a knife. Yeah, I'm going to kill you, you know. And, and uh, he, uh, this fellow, this friend of mine, th he was going to get up and jump him. And, and Bawa was just sitting there. And the man came up to him and Bawa said, uh, opened his, his shirt and pulled his neck. Uh, you know, he exposed his neck. And he said, he said, my brother, may the taking of this life bring your soul the peace that it seeks. And he just, you know... Sh exposed his neck and the fellow just stopped and dropped his knife, fell down on his knees, started crying and sobbing. And then he said, my brother, go home, wash up and come back. And of course, he became a disciple. It's a true story. So what about this power of love? This was not only uh, the power of a coherent love, it was a coherent love that was totally in alignment with 
source. There was no separation between Bawa and this man from Bawa's perspective and from the perspective of the divine. And that's and we all have access to that. We all have this it's access of being the divine. Inherent nature. See, because loving consciousness is our inherent nature. I mean, it's the recognition, it's the felt sense of oneness. There is only one. Appearing as many, appearing as a multiplicity, as appearing as many forms. But the forms arise from the one source, and then they exist, and then they subside. So we create suffering when we become attached to the forms, or we resist the arising of the forms. So there are different portals to this. That's what I was saying. One portal is to dive into uh, whatever it is that's arising and go back, back, back to the source of what's arising. And you find that it's made of consciousness. There is nothing there and there's no one to whom it's arising. So this sounds rather vague, but in my seminars and workshops, this is where we lead people and this is what they realize. Do we? Do you also speak of the the diseases and the the the, the reasons why we have those diseases? Is that is that then that we the love is not entering anymore and flowing freely, or yeah. what is your understanding of why we have those in our lives? Mm -hmm. Well, when I uh, when I started to explore healing with love uh, in my practice, actually with select patients, I came to realize that. Uh, that most illnesses and, and all suffering and distress came from a, a sense, a perceived sense of separation. You know, a separation of one part of ourselves from another that was too painful to hold in consciousness. Because something happened either very early in life, a critical incident, or when we were in our mother's womb. And our mother, whatever she was feeling about her maybe inadequacy of carrying the pregnancy, the re some issue with regard to the relationship, uh, cultural, societal, religious influences, all at a pre-verbal level went into the fetus, the developing embryo, fetus, and baby. And the, the, the baby just started to assume that all of this was what it was because there was no separation between mother and baby. There was a, uh, uh, an entanglement mm -hmm. in the womb. The quantum entanglement. The quantum entanglement between mother and baby. And also picking up what the father was feeling, you know. So all these collective influences uh, and intrauterine influences uh, had an impact on this baby. And when it was born, it's, it, it, it came into the world, or again, reinforced by critical incidents when it was very young, that there's something wrong with me. I'm not okay just the way I am. There's something wrong with me. Or, uh, you know, father wanted a boy and I'm a girl, so I'm a mistake or the parents weren't ready to have a baby and suddenly they did, or they were considering terminating the pregnancy. All of these things, as we, we do more healing work with people, all of this comes out as subconscious or unconscious beliefs, again, that create a sense of separation of one part of ourselves from another. Because the memory, most of the time, we don't go back, uh, most people don't go back more than their third birthday or something like that. But you, do, do you go even in a hoptotic state or, well, or is it it's, subconscious? It's, it's subconscious, it may be unconscious, uh, but it exists. Mm -hmm. it's, it exists. And you can go back uh, during a, using a process that I developed, I call it the tracing process. You can go back. Uh, to a time even uh, uh, during the time that you were in your mother's womb. You can even go back at, to the moment of conception. You can even go back before that. On the soul level when you chose? On the soul level when you chose to come in. And all of these uh, uh, situations, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've explored in some detail.
So you verified it, and you were able to 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 build cases of it. Well, yeah. In term, I haven't uh, I haven't done it in a scientific way because, you know, I'm doing healing work with people and I wasn't there to prove anything other than to prove to myself that this works. So I did this work and when you go back to a core issue and the person can then see what's happening at that very deep level, they can choose to release it. Mm -hmm. And especially what's deeply buried is the emotion that's associated with the memory. With, it could be in subconscious or unconscious memory, but there's an, an emotion or energy associated with that. Mm -hmm. And when you activate uh, the emotion that comes up with that issue, see, it's a, it represents, it's a fractal that comes up of the original situation. You may not even get back to the original situation. But everything is a fractal of everything else associated with this core issue. So you just have to touch the fractal. It's a holographic fractal. So if you change any part of that holographic fractal, you'll change the whole. And what we're interested... You'll change your story. Well, and the story yeah, as well. What the future. That's right. Well, what we're interested in when we want to change uh, a, a memory is we don't want to forget necessarily what happened. We just want to re strip the charge from it. Mm -hmm. So you can remember it. There could be a value to remembering it because then you see somebody else who has a similar issue. You say, ah, I had that issue, but I no longer have the charge on it. So it doesn't distort my, my view, my perception of reality. Mm -hmm. And so now modern neurologic uh, uh, explorations are, are demonstrating how this works very well. How do you deal with people that have a sort of numbness towards an event and cannot really even feel the emotions of it to release it? Yeah, and that's a very good question. Uh, there are some tricks to dealing with numbness. Uh, one way of dealing with numbness is to say, uh, how does it feel not to feel? And there's the pain that is on, uh, yeah. So how does it feel yeah. not to feel? Yeah. And then uh, if, if you were to feel, what would you feel? Or you could say, if that part of your body were to feel, what would it say? So there are different ways of teasing out the information because obviously the numbness is covering a pain that's, that's too too deep for that person to want to share at the present time but there are ways of getting to that and sometimes it's necessary to uh, to make a suggestion somebody uh, you know you can say whatever the situation is if if it's anger you can suggest that underneath most anger is sadness for example just an example uh, and underneath sadness is loss so what was lost? And then the tears come and you've, you've yeah. followed that thread back. So there are, there are ways, to, you know, techniques for, for dealing with that. But the important thing is that whatever comes up, you can release it energetically, especially if you activate the feelings. Mm -hmm. If you can activate the feeling uh, there's a release of, of hormones in the body, usually uh, cortisol and uh, adrenaline. And again, the recent research on memory reveals that uh, short-term memory is converted to the long-term memory uh, when there are uh, hormones associated with that, hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. So, for example, if when something's going on, if you're in the, your mother's womb and something's going on with the mother and she feels stressed, so she releases the cortisol and the adrenaline and she's having these feelings and, 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 and that goes in as a memory and it's converted in an area of the brain called the uh, amygdala and that's converted from uh, short-term memory to a long-term memory in the presence of these hormones. Well, what was discovered recently, although I've been using these techniques for a long time, this is only a recent explanation of 
of why the techniques are so effective. If you can convert uh, 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 in the presence of a hormone, if you can destabilize the long-term memory, mm -hmm. which, would, which is what happens in the presence of these hormones, and then you introduce uh, 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 the energy of love. Uh -huh. The energy of love releases a whole series of other hormones. Mm -hmm. and, and then, in, in other words, it releases oxytocin, mm -hmm. releases alpha-thymosine, it releases, uh, uh, among other things, uh, dopamine and serotonin. So these other hormones start to shift then the, the, the energy of, 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 of anger or fear or sadness mm -hmm. uh, to uh, 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 feelings of love. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of the, the uh, event that's coming up and everything's a fractal so this is a pattern that keeps repeating again and again and again you know and when you think of it then you no longer have the reaction of fear you know or anger or sadness you just feel present with what it is you're just present with what arises, what is. No more reaction. So there's no reaction, and you can really just respond to the situation directly as is appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, uh, you know, I, I, I use the energy of love in, in a way that strips the charge yeah. from negative, f f contractive emotions and memories. Yeah. And that's where there's really free will because some people don't are not really ready or don't really want to it, it just naturally heal with that love. Because from my understanding, you're saying the love then heals and then we're free and then it, it can be very quick even. Some people that have near-death experiences come back from these experiences and can heal a cancer as Anita Moriani explained to me in, in the interview we did and it's magnificent. Miracles can happen then. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Well... Uh, many near-death experiences, I think, reveal that uh, you're not only your physical body with its thoughts and feelings and sensations. Your consciousness itself. And when you know that through your direct experience, not reading about it or hearing about it, but through your direct experience, everything shifts. Then there's a, you, you no longer have a fear of death. You know, you might want to stay and enjoy and live your life, but you can be much more present then because there's not a fear of death. And that's part of also what we do in, the, uh, in, in the, some of the seminars, the opening to oneness through love. And people come into a realization of their own true nature, then their own true nature is present prior to birth and after death. So there's a, 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 a an awareness of your immortality as a consciousness, mm -hmm. not as an individual consciousness, but as a consciousness. Mm -hmm. Anita Moriani, that had this big near death experience, is really her story is buzzing throughout the internet and everywhere around the world because it's magnificent, and she's reporting now to feel invincible, and to walk in life that way, but not as invincible, but just as invincible. Yeah, well, then she's, she's in touch with the ever-present oneness yeah. that's, uh, that is her essential nature. And, of course, th that, that can't be touched, uh, you know, by the forms that arise from it. The forms arise from it, uh, and they subside into it. So she knows the truth of who uh, we could say she is, but it's, you know, it's a yeah. word. It's... It's, it's beyond the you know in, individual she, and yet her soul is 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 still operating, uh, bringing that unified oneness through this individuated form called her, whatever she is. So her soul is sort of mediating. We're having a lot of noise. Sorry, my beautiful co-creators, but I think it's okay because this mic is really unidirectional. So, we're um, uh, yeah. Her soul is. Uh, her soul is is mediating. Yeah. 
yeah. this. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's it, I could I could feel the I could feel it. I could feel the the power and the magnificent of once we're we're really in that in that love, em embodying it, being that feeling immortal. How then this energy could even uh, uh, make it disappear some diseases or some things that are not that that are not love. Yeah. Well, again, the 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 essential. Um The key to to uh, recognizing how to deal with disease is to recognize that it's a perceived sense of separation. Mm -hmm. it's perceived sense. It's not even it's not separation. A separation because separation is always an apparency. It's it's not it's not real. You know, the nature of everything is that it's all interconnected and it's it's an aspect of the one. So any sense of separation is a perception, uh, and and that's what beliefs are mostly. Beliefs, you know. Do you believe uh, in Santa Claus? Well, you know, I have faith. Do you believe in God? Well, I have faith in God. And when Jung was asked if he believed in God, he said, "No, I know God. That's direct." You know, another way of looking at it: Do you believe that you have a thumb? No, I don't believe I have a thumb. I know I have a thumb. There's a difference between a belief and direct knowing. And so that's what we're focusing on is the direct knowing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This is very, very exciting. Is there something else that you would like to add to this conversation that you think is important for all those juicy co-creators out there, wherever they're at in their life, to hear, know, feel? Well, just know that There is only one appearing as many, revealing itself as love. The, uh, uh, love Whatever it looks like. Yeah, well, love is, is the reminder of, of unity, of, of, of oneness. And it's also, you know, the urge to merge. It's a felt sense of, of wanting to become one with whatever the object of your love is. So if you're loving pizza... What do you want to do with it? You want to eat it. You want to become one with it. If you're loving source, what do you want to do? You want to merge with source, become one with source. When you become one with source, there is no you and there is no it. There's only one. Pizza is a great example because a lot of people eating pizza make themselves wrong for eating that pizza. Then there is another feeling behind it. They're loving the pizza, but they, they know and, and think that it's bad for them. Then there is consequences. So. Well, they have conflicting beliefs yeah. about it. Yeah, that's why, you know, and p even more importantly, people do that with judgments. And they have conflicting beliefs about themselves. Yes. That's why the most important person to love is yourself uh -huh. and in order to do that effectively uh, you need to forgive yourself for the things that you did that you think were unloving yeah. to yourself to others that you felt guilty about that you felt ashamed of and we have a process called the forgiveness process yeah. that's a very profound portal to oneness yeah. see Like the open, open, to recognizing ourselves and others and forgiving ourselves, but also forgiving all that is because we're one anyway. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, yeah, I think the Hapono Pono uh, uh, technology is a very good technology. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, they, it came from an alignment. And, uh, uh, but uh, we, I think we, we have a, uh, a way of doing forgiveness that takes half an hour that's very profound and, Yeah, it, it's not a, forgiveness is not about the other person, yeah. although we think it's about the other person. It's because where does the forgiveness take place? Within us. Mm -hmm. So forgiving is about forgiving yourself love, forgiving yourself freedom. Mm -hmm. So it's about you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, when you have the intention to forgive yourself, uh, you can move directly into oneness. It's, that's the potential. Uh -huh. The potential is there for you. Sometimes it's necessary to do it again and again, just like peeling the layers of an onion. So sometimes it happens just like that, and sometimes you have to do it yeah. again and again. While being loving towards ourselves in the process. Right. Totally, unconditionally accepting yourself as you are.
Beautiful. Well, those are great words to finish this interview with. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, my beautiful co-creators, for watching, for sharing all these beautiful videos and message. Uh, we send you much love from Reims in France, the Champagne region. Ooh la la. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Much love. Bye bye. Bubbles of love. Bubbles of love. That's right. <laughs>Co-creators, Lilu here on the Juicy Living Tour Europe. Today I'm in the house in France with one of the, the speakers here at this Congress uh, of Quantic Planet. Thank you for being here and taking the time to speak also with us for all the people, all the juicy co-creators out there that don't have the chance to meet you in person and not being here. So thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. So I'm very interested in your, in your background. Could you tell us uh, what got you to be here, one of the speakers at this, uh, this, this quantum therapy uh, event? Well, you know, I, I think I'm regarded as one of the pioneers of uh, uh, body-mind medicine. I started doing this work uh, after a revelation that I had that my work was to heal with love in the mid-70s. And I was in a busy practice in San Francisco and uh, uh, I know heart math has done a lot of studies but uh, did you do your own research I well I did my own research and as a consequence of the research I did which was actually done before heart math got involved in the research they contacted me uh, they had read my book and they said well, you're doing what we're doing, please join us. So I be became a member of their scientific advisory board for six years. And so I did research with them. And when I started doing the DNA research that I eventually did, they did the measurements on me. And I'll be demonstrating some of the measurements that were taken at HeartMath when I enter into states of coherent love. In other words, there's a, a way of electromagnetically measuring when you're in a state of expanded, uh, coherent love. And can we be uh, in that state in regular life, or do we need to be in deep meditation to, to reach it? Or is it more and more possible for you to do that now ongoingly during the day as well? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. I think if you're, if you, uh, if in a way, spirit came to me and said, your work is to heal with love, you, you got that in the moment, in a second? I got that during a deep meditation. I was in a room by myself. It was dark, and suddenly it seemed like somebody turned on the lights. Uh -huh. So I opened my eyes, and the room was still dark. And then I closed my eyes again, and there was this inner luminosity. And then I heard a voice which said, 
your work is to heal with love. But I say voice, but it was so profound. It was so awesome. And, uh, you know, hair stood up in the back of my neck. Tears started to roll down my cheeks. And then I said, oh, so I'm worthy. And it said, you're no more or less worthy than anyone else. Your work is to heal with love. And uh, I knew it was true. I didn't know what it meant. And that's how I came to be here, because I started to explore, eventually, what healing meant and what love meant. Can we measure love? Can we measure the impact of... consciously choose to enter into this portal. Mm. So how to, how to do that? And one of the things that, uh, you know, that I uh, learned before I entered into a relationship with heart math was that there were three easy steps to entering this portal. One is to simply shift your attention from wherever it is to the center of your chest, your energetic heart. Step two, breathe in and out through this energetic heart, as if you're breathing through the heart, you know. And then step three, uh, focus on something that makes you feel good. Focus on some, a feeling that opens your heart. Now, if you can bring in and recall something loving, and most people can, then you do that, or a feeling of gratitude, or even forgiveness, or caring, or appreciation. These are all frequency bands of love. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the entire electromagnetic, if you're conscious uh, of the fact that you can train yourself, then you can stay in that state. There are some people who spontaneously uh, remain in that state. And then there are people who come and go from that state. So we have a quite a spectrum. There's uh, not one process for all. Uh, right, it's different for different people. But one of the things I, I, I intend to be sharing uh, today is that there are portals that you can enter these states through. And uh, today I'll be focusing on the heart portal, that opening, that heart space that opens us to expanded awareness. Well, tell us more now about that. We're getting in there. We want to hear more about that. that I, I guess, don't you want to hear more about it? That this heart portal, how, what makes it open up and why do you call it a portal? Okay, I call it a portal because although uh, what we're referring to is, is, is consciousness itself, we don't always have access to it, as you just mentioned. You know, are we in the state all the time? Well, we're not for most people. We have to come.